From spooky extensive tunnels to ancient feats of engineering, here are 10 scary underground places. Number 10. East Side Access Tunnels East Side Access is one of the largest infrastructure projects ever undertaken by New York City's Metropolitan Transportation Authority, MTA. It aims to expand Long Island Railroad LIRR service to Grand Central Terminal, which will reduce many riders' average commute time by up to 40 minutes. To make this possible, over 8 miles of tunnels are being built beneath the streets of Manhattan and Queens. The project began during the 1990s, and when it's finally complete, there will be a new 8-track terminal with four waiting platforms below Grand Central, serving an estimated 162,000 customers daily. The $11.1 billion endeavor is projected to open to the public in December of next year if all the deadlines are met in a timely fashion. This image, taken in February 2013, shows one of the massive caverns beneath Grand Central that will eventually take on the appearance of an ordinary train station, with two levels of tracks that will accommodate up to 24 LIRR trains per hour. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced in May of this year that most of the major construction has been completed, and that the electrified third rail on the tracks is slated to be powered up next month. Number 9. Chu Chi Tunnels during the Vietnam War, the communist Viet Cong VC had to compete with the American and South Vietnamese troops, who were much better supplied. To gain an edge, the VC dug tens of thousands of miles of narrow tunnels in and around the Chu Chi district northwest of Saigon and elsewhere. These labyrinths were used for housing troops, transporting supplies and communications, situating booby traps, launching surprise attacks, and slipping below ground to safety. The network grew to include bomb shelters, kitchens, hospitals, and even theaters for entertaining soldiers. By going underground, the VC and North Vietnamese troops had a major advantage against American forces, who relied heavily on aerial bombing. Many of the tunnels were dug painstakingly by hand, little by little, expanding on a previous network that was built in the 1940s during the War for Vietnamese Independence from French colonial authority. Upon their completion, these subterranean pathways spanned a 155-mile, 250-kilometer stretch from outside Saigon to the Cambodian border, according to History.com. American and South Vietnamese soldiers known as tunnel rats were trained to enter these spaces and detect booby traps and enemy troops. Many soldiers from all fighting factions died in the Chu Chi tunnels, which are now a popular tourist attraction as part of a Vietnam War memorial park in Ho Chi Minh City. Number 8. Church of Bones from the outside looking in, the Santa Maria della Concezione de Cappuccini, or Our Lady of the Conception of the Cappuccinis, looks pretty ordinary. But beneath the chapel, there's a series of crypts with the bones of over 4,000 friars covering the walls and ceilings. Some of the bones are arranged into patterns that are said to have religious significance, while others are dressed in Franciscan attire. Commissioned in 1626 by Pope Urban VIII, the church was completed in 1631. That same year, a member of the Capuchin order named Cardinal Antonio Barberini ordered for the remains of thousands of friars to be exhumed from their original resting places and relocated in the church's crypt. The remains date between 1500 and 1870. There are five chapels in the crypt, all which rely exclusively on a very limited supply of natural light and add to the site's eeriness. Several noteworthy historical figures have visited, including the Marquis de Sade and Mark Twain. It's also said that the crypt inspired other famous sites throughout the world, including the Sedlec Ossuary in the Czech Republic and the Skull Chapel in Poland. Number 7. Aktun Tunichil Muknal Located in the Tapir Mountain Nature Reserve in western Belize, Aktun Tunichil Muknal, also known as ATM or the Cave of the Crystal Sepulchre, is a Maya archaeological site showcasing stoneware, ceramics, and human skeletons. Just to get there is a journey requiring an hour-long hike, including through shallow rivers. Entry into the cave itself involves crossing a river and traversing through several narrow passages. The site's most well-known human remains are known as the Crystal Maiden. Despite the feminine name, the bones belong to an adolescent boy who was perhaps 17 years old when he died, possibly as a sacrifice victim. His bones appear to be sparkling due to calcification, hence his nickname. Many of the cave's artifacts are calcified to the floor, showing just how long they've been sitting there untouched. An object called the Monkey Pot is one of just four known vessels of its type ever found in Central America. Additionally, the Maya reshaped the cave to fit their cultural and spiritual beliefs, including by constructing sacrificial altars. Numerous wild animals live within the cave system, including a large bat population, freshwater crabs, crayfish, catfish, other tropical fish, predatory spiders, otters, and possibly a rodent species known as the agouti. Number 6. Cincinnati Subway 
Beneath the streets of Cincinnati, Ohio lie three miles of abandoned subway tunnels and four stations that were never used. The Cincinnati subway project began in the early 20th century amid rapidly increasing downtown congestion. It was one of the earliest attempts to establish a subway system in the U.S. But the project's costs kept rising. Political uncertainty made the funding unreliable to begin with. The Cincinnati subway was canceled indefinitely in 1928 with the Great Depression right around the corner, when it was one-third complete. The closure was meant to be temporary, but the project was never revived and was officially canceled in 1948. Its eerie remnants remain as a testament to what Andrew J. Hawkins described in The Verge as one of the biggest transportation blunders of all time. The unused, unfinished system is the nation's largest abandoned subway. Designated unsafe for public entry, the empty tunnels are kept closed, making it nearly impossible to visit. City officials have gone out of their way to demolish entrances and otherwise conceal any signs of its existence, save for a few remaining sidewalk grates. Anyone who wants to access the tunnels must know where to go and be willing to trespass. Author and photographer Jake Mecklenburg is one of few people who have seen the Cincinnati subway for themselves, and he documented the creepy site for the rest of us to enjoy through his photos in hopes of keeping its history alive. The city currently has no plans to repurpose the empty space, and it seems like authorities would much prefer to forget that the failed transit system is even there. Have you ever been here before? Would you like to visit? Let me know in the comments down below. Seems like a fun, creepy place to explore. And if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 5. The Catacombs of Qom el Shokafa Located in Alexandria, Egypt, the Catacombs of Qom el Shokafa, Mound of Shards, is an acropolis containing Alexandrian tombs and statues, as well as archaeological artifacts and architecture featuring a combination of elements from Roman, Greek, and Egyptian style. Built in the 2nd century during the age of the Antonine emperors, the tombs were tunneled into bedrock and equipped with a circular staircase that was used for carrying the deceased to their final resting place until sometime during the 4th century. Visitors to the tombs brought vessels containing food and wine which they consumed during the time they spent there. Not wanting to bring the containers home, they then smashed them onto the ground, hence the site's name which translates to Mound of Shards. The site was rediscovered in 1900 when a donkey fell through the ground and into a burial shaft and was named after the heaps of clay shards found inside. Since then, three sarcophagi and an array of human and animal remains have been found there. Experts are perplexed because it appears as though the catacombs were intended for a single wealthy family, yet it was expanded at one point for reasons that are unclear. Number 4. Moose Jaw Tunnels for decades, officials in the sleepy Canadian city of Moose Jaw in Saskatchewan denied that there was an underground network of tunnels right below the population's feet. But when part of Main Street collapsed during the 1970s, it became increasingly difficult to deny their existence. Excavations eventually proved that the secret labyrinths actually do exist and that the senior citizens who claimed to remember them were speaking the truth. Chinese railway workers built the tunnels starting in 1908 after being beaten and discriminated against for allegedly stealing white people's jobs. On top of that, a head tax was imposed on Chinese immigrants who lacked legal status. Those who were unable to pay it hid underground, hoping the prejudice would eventually pass. Accessed through the basements of buildings owned by legal Chinese immigrants, the tunnels were used for many years, with some people even raising families in them, according to the Globe and the Mail. During the 1920s, when the US and much of Canada implemented prohibition policies, the tunnels were repurposed as a bootlegging hub, and Moose Jaw regularly received visitors from the Chicago mob. The Chinese immigrants, aka the tunnel's original inhabitants, and the local police reportedly cooperated with the gangsters while the mayor took a hands-off approach to the situation entirely. The tunnels housed a seedy underworld of prostitution, boozing, gambling, and other vices. Even Al Capone was rumored to have spent time there, and it's said that he even moved briefly to Moose Jaw to evade federal U.S. agents who were on his heels. Today, the network is a tourist attraction that offers historical reenactments and guided tours through the dark tunnels and their amenities. Number 3. Kariz e Kish Known for its luxurious beaches and shopping malls, the Iranian island of Kish in the Persian Gulf is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the Middle East. It's not primarily known for its history or ancient architecture, but many visitors don't think to venture underground in search of such sites. Kariz e Kish, or the Kish Kanat, is a pre-Islamic hydraulic system consisting of a series of wells that were built on a gentle incline to guide water from the nearby mountains to dry areas. Built over 2,500 years ago, this Persian architectural gem predates the development of Roman aqueducts. Altogether, there are 274 wells which passed water through three layers of materials that filtered out solid objects and neutralized acids in the water. The water at the bottom was considered the best for drinking, while the water collected from the upper layers was used for irrigating fields. 
There's a series of tunnels that stretch for 5 miles, 8 kilometers, and resemble a subterranean city situated 52 feet, 16 meters below ground near the wells. The Kanat and tunnels are unique because they were carved out of coral, which almost entirely makes up the island of Kish, offering visitors a unique glimpse at fossils, shells, and corals that are millions of years old. In 1999, the site was expanded with plans to turn it into an underground shopping center containing restaurants, a museum, and gift shops. While the project was never completed, it is supposedly still in the works and would probably make the sprawling, deserted site seem a little less spooky. Number 2. Oyster Adams Bunker Fallout shelters became popular during the Cold War under President John F. Kennedy, who warned Americans of impending nuclear war in 1961. Congress subsequently spent $169 million establishing public and private bunkers for people to seek shelter in if nuclear war became a reality. One such facility was implemented in the basement of Oyster Adams School in Washington, D.C. in 1962. It sits behind a plain-looking door that offers no clues as to what's on the other side. Entering the fallout shelter is like stepping back in time. Its original contents remain intact and went untouched for some 55 years after it was built, and is one of the few remaining fallout shelters, as most were dismantled during the 70s when the government decided they were no longer necessary. The space is long, narrow, dark, and was meant to house up to 100 survivors while they waded through the nuclear fallout of a nearby attack. It contained enough provisions for two weeks. Barrels of drinking water and boxes of supplies, including all-purpose survival biscuits, still line the walls as an eerie testament to the widespread fear of nuclear warfare that once pervaded the nation. There are also sanitation kits, aka portable toilets topped with rubber seats. The shelter's occupants would have had no privacy while doing their business. Additionally, the bunker contains medical supplies and pamphlets on how to handle emergencies. Like all the others that were built at the height of the American public's hysteria over impending nuclear doom, it was never used. Number 1. Downstreet Ghost Station The Downstreet Ghost Station is just one of numerous abandoned underground metro stations throughout London. It opened in 1907 and was only used for 25 years because its long tunnels from station to platform were considered both inconvenient and a safety issue. Local residents tended to be wealthy, so they often traveled by other means, and there were also several nearby stations that commuters preferred over Down Street. Simply put, people didn't use the station enough to justify keeping it open, and many trains passed right through without stopping, leading to its closure in 1932. But it's the Down Street station's long tunnels that made it useful as a bunker for the Railway Executive Committee (REC), Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and the War Cabinet during World War II. Tasked with directing all the country's train activity, the REC housed as many as 40 employees in the bunker at any given time throughout the war, with workers staying below ground for up to two weeks at a time. The bunker was gutted after the war, but the station still contains evidence of its wartime use, including hand-painted signs pointing toward where the bunker's offices were, bright yellow paint that was supposedly implemented to brighten up an undeniably dreary place, and leftover kitchen and bathroom fixtures. Since then, the station has only been used for engineering purposes and as an emergency exit from the underground. There are occasional tours through the site, which involve going into some pretty filthy tunnels and areas that are pitch dark. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite spooky place? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.